a question for you all today who is mark mirzvinsky chelsea clinton's husband and hillary's son-in-law well do you want to know absolutely sign me up yeah there ain't no question about it absolutely sign me up actually i want to know too yeah man what about me and me and me and me and me. And what about me? It's unanimous. They all want to know 10 things about Mark Mirzvinsky, Chelsea Clinton's son-in-law. So, we gonna get right down to it. Yes, we are. Time to stop, okay? No more! Ah, man, I, I was just gonna get straight to it. So here are the 10 things you need to know about Chelsea's husband, who is also Hillary and Bill Clinton's son-in-law. And I'm gonna spell it out for you, because reasons. Number one, he's a Democrat. Number two, he's a liberal. Number three, he's greedy as all heck. Number four, he's a part of the Bavarian Illuminati. Number five, he's in league with Satan. Hey, ah, man, buddy, I believe you're going too fast for me. I believe you're going way too fast for me, Dad. Let him speak. He's going to speak his mind anyway. You know he's right. Ah, screw it. You, you go ahead, man. I don't care. Yeah, man. Tell it like it is, homeboy. Preach. Absolutely, man. Just preach. All right now, daddy. Number six, he's selfish. Number seven, he's part of the problem and refuses to be a part of the solution. Number eight, he hates the idea of a constitutional republic and craps all over the concept of God's word and God himself. Number nine, he knows nothing about what it's like to be a truly privileged child and creation of God. And number ten... He doesn't care about any one of you or me. Not even himself. Why? Because he sold his soul to the devil, that's why! No! Oh! Catch me outside, how about that? Winning! Winning. Jesus! Jesus! Christ! Damn! Oh my God! Don't you believe it? Yeah, because you'd be in jail. And you can tell them to go. Well, he's my son-in-law, so he's entitled to be as much of a liberal as he wants. Miss A, if you saute a scallop in a non-stick pan, they won't stick. That's why it's called facts of life. I mean, you do guys, you do know where this is going, right? Because I just summed up an entire top ten list about this guy in about three minutes. Or actually, no, more like two and a half minutes, given the minute-long intro. But that's not all I got for you guys, because I got plenty more of that where that came from. Well, I think you'd be quite all right by telling us more. Oh, you'll be fine. He's factual. And he's been known to cause liberal cancer. I mean, do you get it now? Oh, hey guys, want to learn about Charles Manson? You know he died recently, right? Yeah, I know that, but who wants to learn about him? I don't care about that. Wait, you do know that Charles Manson recently died on the day before Thanksgiving in 2017, don't you? Yeah, I choose to realize that, but I don't care. Can we just get to it already? Yeah. Yeah, let's just get to it. Screw it. All righty, ladies and gentlemen. It is time to discuss 
the top 10 reasons why the media hated Charles Manson so much. And I'm going to spell it out for you. Number one, they thought of him as a liberal when in fact he was really just a conservative. Number two, they wouldn't speak the truth about him, but Charles Manson knew the truth all along. And that's why people have constantly shut him out and crapped all over him. Number three, they failed Charles Manson like society has failed all of us because society, as you know, is controlled by a secret society of wealthy families such as the Gates, the Waltons, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, and so on and so forth because they have all the money and we're just slaves to money because we barely make it to the next day. And that's what happened to Charles Manson, except he didn't have to go through that because he was in prison pretty much all his life because his mother failed him. Number four, is it five? I think it's four. Number four, the media constantly accuses him, even of death, of killing all these people when in fact he only ordered the killings. But apparently they think that for whatever strange reason, ordering a kill on someone is worse than the kill itself. Number five, his favorite song of all time was the Beatles' Helter Skelter, which was covered by Motley Crue during his tenure in prison. Most media sources claim that he cites the song as being the inspiration for what he called a race war. In reality, he was just trying to even the playing field between the rich and the poor, which is what any one of us would have done. Everything is good off on this hood, so knock on wood! And everything is good to go. I mean, you do get the concept, right? Yeah. And don't let me go with the countdown and let's get right to it. Number six, Charles Manson was the original king of the shoot. Apparently, most people think that it was Jim Cornette that was the king of the shoot, but it was actually Charles Manson. That was long before Jim Cornette even became a manager of anyone or anything. And this was about 40 years ago. And he served about 50 years in prison for a bunch of murders that he never did. So it figures. A lot. A lot. A lot. A lot. A lot. A lot. Number seven. Or is it eight? I think it's seven. I don't know, though. Yeah, it's seven. It's seven? Yeah. Number seven. Charles Manson never kissed anyone's posterior because he knew in his heart that he was right. And he was. Number eight. Charles Manson was also an accomplished up-and-coming musician, but his career was cut short because the elitists screwed him over, and he had to take the law into his own hands, vigilante style. Because apparently vigilanteism is just illegal now, because people don't want to enforce it because they think it's too politically incorrect. Ah! Oh my god! Hey, this stuff can't be happening, man. Number nine, and this is probably one of the most important ones. Number nine, Charles Manson was anti-society. He was anti-social. Kind of like how I am, except he's a lot more brutally honest about it, right? And I guess we all are to a certain extent, right? And number ten, his claims about Richard Nixon opening up the country for foreign trade were absolutely 100% truthful. They were absolutely right. And he was right for saying that and concluding that. Which kind of figures, considering Charles Manson was born and died a conservative anyway, right? Good answer! Yeah! Good answer! But I don't care what you say. That is the best answer I have ever heard. And once again, I say it's all good in this hood, so knock on wood. Knock on wood, knock on wood. Everything is good. Hey, kids. Did you know that Spot the Liberal and other such important web series on my YouTube channel is considered educational television? Educational television? Ah! Yep, that's right. Educational television. Because it's common sense for people who don't have common sense. Let's just get to the next segment already, shall we? Okay. All right now, Danny. It's time to shoot from the hip. We're going to talk about the 10 reasons why YouTube is completely falling apart. And we all going to spell it out for you. That's right. Yeah, man. 
You know, and so do we. Let's get on with it already. Me too, I'm starving. Number one, too many people on YouTube who do stupid stuff just to get attention. Number two, too many people doing weird stuff just to get attention. Number three, too many people doing illegal stuff just to get attention and fame and money. Number four, too many people on YouTube in general trying to make YouTube their career and make money. I mean, we could all dream, can't we? SHUT UP! Jeez, man, okay, I'll shut up. By the way, man, what number are we on? I don't know, I think we're on number five, I don't know. Yeah, I think we on number five. Yeah, you can say that again. Let's just get on with it already, shall we? Okay. Yeah, that's no question about it, keep going then. By the way, can I call you Ken? No! Call me Scully! All right, I'm not gonna argue with that. Number five, too many people on YouTube in general. I'm pretty sure that Facebook and Google have the same problem too, so YouTube's not the only culprit in this now, is it? Because YouTube sees 400 hours of new content make it onto the site every single 60th of an hour or every minute. That would be about 2,400 hours. Actually, no, scratch that. 24,000 hours of new content uploaded to YouTube every hour? What? Damn! All right, let's, let's just, this is too much stuff, man. Way too much stuff for me. You can say that again. I mean, really, you can. Number six, too many people using YouTube and other social media website platforms as a means to cyberbully, spam, or troll others for doing absolutely nothing wrong. Hey, is it time to knock on porcelain yet? I thought we were supposed to knock on wood. Yeah, I think so. Number seven, too many people on YouTube complaining about the sound of every new album that comes out that features the likeness or musicianship of their favorite bands or musicians or other such artists. I mean, look at what happened to Pathology. They released an album three years ago called Throne of Rain. Everybody crapped on the drummer, Dave Astor. Three years later, they released their ninth self-titled album. Everybody craps all over the vocalists because reasons because they can't really be satisfied with anything anymore Because they're ungrateful and they don't give a crap. Yeah, man, that's right. I would think so I mean, that's how people are that terrible species any dang way. Yeah, I agree with that number eight too many people on YouTube posting fake news and I don't just say fake news just to say fake news I say that there's too many people posting fake news on there just because it's true. And it's funny because it's true, because of reasons. Well, that's not bad, and I'm glad. Arrgh! Good grief! You could have said your winky, your ding a ling, any mad thing. It still wouldn't sound right. What the land? <laughs> Alright, what did I say wrong? Sir, we are the YouTube censorship police. We're gonna have to ask you to show your license and registration. License and registration? What for? Because you broke YouTube's ever-changing and ever more convoluted policy. No innuendos in a YouTube video. Oh, that figures. Right, here's my license and registration. What you gonna do with it? I'm just gonna write you a citation. Okay, that's fine. So, uh... Does that mean I get a strike on my channel? No. All right, what's going on here? I didn't, I really want to know what's going on. Seriously, though, what is going on? Yeah, that's what I want to know. Number nine, too many people in the administration staff on YouTube turn a blind eye to every bad thing that's going on on YouTube, and they do absolutely nothing to do anything about it. Except for Elsa Gate. Why? What is that? They finally did something about that. Oh, they did? Yeah. Well, that figures. I wonder why that is. Because of reasons. Yeah, I think I know what those reasons are. I saw a video about it just the other day. You did? Yeah. Well, crap my bed! Wind up dead, shoot me in the head, and call me Fred! I 
I don't know what's going on, but I know it ain't gonna work here. We're gonna do the last one. Pull yourself together here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. And finally, number 10. Too many people on YouTube expressing their liberal allegiance in such a way that ticks everybody off to such a degree to where witch hunts start up against them. And when those witch hearts start, they stop right afterwards because nobody can find conclusive proof of evidence. Kind of like how the FBI let Hillary Clinton off the hook, not once, but twice, even though she had did something so totally illegal that anyone else that got caught and convicted of doing it would have gotten the death penalty. Because they're losers. Do you get it? No! Just no, just no. And now it's time to knock on wood once again. And there we go. Surprisingly, I don't hear the dogs barking yet. That's because they know you're recording a video, man. Uh-huh. Let's just get on with it already. Oi! I want to now who wants to talk about Dan Schneider. Anybody want to talk about Dan Schneider? I don't know, man. You tell me. Did I tell you he has a foot fetish? He has a fetish for liking fate. Uh, not that it matters, but I didn't need to know that, TMI. Well, you would be happy to know that Dan Schneider has an insatiable fetish for women doing stuff with their feet. He has a foot fetish. He's a fetishist. He's an extreme fetishist. And why hasn't anybody called him out for it? Because he's a multi-millionaire. That is why. And you wonder why Nickelodeon's going to pieces in a handbag, man. It's like Nickelodeon took their common sense, shot it 17 times, stuffed it in the back of a freezing truck, and left it to die in that trunk. I don't know, man. I mean, you tell me. Well, here's a word that's going around, and it may get a little dark in here, so you may want to listen carefully. See... Dan Schneider is responsible for Nickelodeon being the one place where foot fetishes are fantasized and realized in due time. And you wonder why? Because Dan Schneider... No! That's right! Dan Schneider has a fetish for women's feet, particularly the feet of teenage girls and young children women. In other words, he's a pedophile. Oh, I don't care about that. Just gonna leave it at there and just go from here. Nick gonna make a difference anyway. Says so I've heard about some stuff there, but not like this before, cause so uh, reasons beyond my controls. Maybe I should find that out for myself. Now, guys, you do realize that you're making fun of a famous guy who works at Nickelodeon, right? Yeah, I know that, but nobody cares. Uh, right. So the man who finally stepped up to the plate and brought these accusations against Dan Schneider, creator of many shows like The Amanda Show, Drake and Josh, Victorious, iCarly, and so on, he actually decided to activate the conservative in him, and he accused Dan Schneider by saying this, and I quote, He's a monster, the worst predator alive. And if you wonder why no one will confront or even charge him, well, he's in charge of many hit TV shows like iCarly, Victorious, and so on and so forth which rake in oceans of money. Tens of millions of dollars. So Viacom and Nick basically warned him about it and suggested that he do something about it, then pay for his mad lawyers. Yeah, I'm just improvising what Robert Downey Jr. said. You can say that again. 
Absolutely. Say, what's been going on here? I want to know what's been going on. We talking about Dan Schneider, that's what. Dan Schneider? What you talking about? We talking about Dan Schneider, the man who's been responsible for exposing his foot fetish to tens of millions of people all over the world, the little boys and girls, so they can be like him and experience his foot fetish and whatnot. You know, stuff like that. Just, just fetishy stuff. Because nobody's going to confront or charge him for it. So we might as well. Hey, I'm in on it. I'm in on this whole thing. You got it. I'm in on it. I would think that his foot fetish spans many different Nickelodeon shows, including SpongeBob SquarePants and Bubble Guppies and, oh yeah, that's right, Dora the Explorer and the spinoff show inspired by it, Dora and Friends into the City. Yeah, also known as Nickelodeon trying to cover up Dan Schneider's darning fetish. Now I want to know why that is. Because you'd be in jail. Burn! You got that right. Yeah! I would consider half of all of Trump's supporters to be what I like to call a basket of deplorables. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get for calling us deplorable, you sucker fool! Hope there's a place down there in Dante's Inferno for you! Cause I'm telling you what! You going straight there! I did not have sexual relations with that woman. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, you going down there too, man. You going straight down there to Dante Alighieri's Inferno. Right there in the ninth circle, where you gonna freeze and burn alive and freeze again. Wait, isn't that how it works? You yeah, would think so. Ah, uh, forget it. Let's just move on and forget this whole thing even happened. Yeah, let's do that. Uh-huh. And we're gonna talk about something else, aren't we? Yeah. Absolutely, we're gonna talk about something else. Hey, can I get on in this? No. It's all good. Don't, don't even worry about it. Hey, can I go say? No. Uh, now it's time for the helpful tip of the day. Not that anybody cares, but who cares? You know how they say putting toothpaste on your skin will solve the problem? Don't listen to them, they're full of crap. Use something like benzoyl peroxide or salicylic acid to get rid of those bumps on your skin. What about when you get a freaking jellyfish thing on your skin? What do you do there, man? What do you do? Oh, it's so easy. Just put some nice vinegar on it, and everything's gonna be fine. And don't scratch at it either. It's only gonna make the venom go deeper into your skin. It's only gonna make it worse. So vinegar on a jellyfish sting. Got it. And that has been your helpful tip for today. Goodbye.